so good morning to one and all in the last lecture we have discussed how to design the pre-stressed concrete beam definitely the steps are very less but when we start the actual design minimum 15 to 20 pages are required for the completion of one beam so First of all, we have discussed uh, uh, design steps and then we will discuss the how to start the problem. Okay. So, in the last lecture, we have designed the beam. That means, the consider the preliminary section, properties of the section, find out the bending moment due to dead load, due to live load, tracer at the top, tracer at the bottom, that is the superior and the inferior. Then we can find out the pre-stressing force and eccentricity and the number of cables required. Okay. Once we have done this, then second, we can check for the load carrying capacity of the flexure section. And uh, using the IS1343-2012, page number 51, we can find out the reinforcement ratio and find out the capacity or flexural capacity of the pre-stress concrete section that will be discussed in the last lecture. Now today in this lecture we have discussed the further design steps. First is the check for the ultimate shear strength, ultimate shear strength of the pre-stress concrete beam. Now again in the pre-stress concrete this step is also already discussed in the last few lectures. We know that the in case of beam, shear force is maximum at the support and minimum or nil at the mid span. And the cable profile is parabolic. And because of the cable profile, because of the eccentricity, we can say that the, the shear capacity of the pre-stressing section is improved. But even though it is necessary to check the flexural capacity of the beam crack in flexure crack in flexure means at the mid span and uncrack in flexure that is at the support section so first of all we can find out the maximum shear force that is equal to here we have used the limit state of, of collapse that's why 1.5 into wd plus wl into l by 2 so we get the maximum shear force so according to the is 1343 2012 pristress concrete code of practice Page number 32, clause number 23.41, the ultimate shear resistance of the support section, that is the uncrack in flexure, is given by, this is the formula. VCW, that is the shear capacity, that is equal to 0.67B multiplied by, actually this is BW multiplied by H, that is the width of the wave multiplied by total depth of the section into under root of Ft square, that is the tensile stress which is considered plus 0.8 times FCP and this we know that FCP is equal to 80% uh, of the FCP multiplied by Ft plus if the cable profile is inclined or parabolic in that case we have considered NP sin theta it is eccentric then we can consider this otherwise we have considered only this formula. Then how to find out Ft? Again this formula is given in IS1343 that is 0 0.24 under root of Fck that is the grade of the concrete and in case of post tension we have generally considered M30 is the minimum. Then Fcp is equal to neta into P divided by A. So Fcp is equal to here neta is the efficiency of the section multiplied by total stressing force which is already calculated and the divided by area of the section. Similarly, due to parabolic profile, we can find out the slope of cable at the support that is equal to 4E divided by L or at the mid span. Now, once we find out the VCW that is the shear capacity of the section uncrack in flexure that is at the support, this value should be greater than maximum shear force due to the external load. Then the section is set. Otherwise, we can increase the depth. Provide minimum shear reinforcement. Then once we have done this, we can provide the minimum shear reinforcement in the form of vertical stirrups. Even though this is satisfied, we can provide the 
minimum share reinforcement similar to RCC. And, and from this, we can find out the spacing. Here again, we have considered the two leg vertical stirrup similar to RCC. That's why 0.87 into FY, grade of the shear reinforcement into area of shear reinforcement into DT divided by V. And this value should be less than or equal to 0.75 times the DT or 4 times of VW. This is the first one. Second, the section crack in flexure. Crack in flexure means we have considered at the mid span. So, ultimate shear resistance of the section crack in flexure is equal to again we use the reference of the IS1343. VCR is equal to 1 minus 0 0.50 by FP divided by FP into tau C multiplied by VD plus M0 into VU divided by MU. Then this MU is calculated as FCP multiplied by ZB and FCP is equal to this FCP is equal to Nita P by A plus Nita into PE divided by ZB and this FPE this is the FCP and this is FPE that should be less than 0 0.60 times the FP. If VCR using this formula is greater than VU then the section is safe. Take the value of VC from table number 8, page number 33, IS 1343, 2012. This is the second check. Then next is the check for the traces. We can find out the traces developed due to the external load, due to the dead load at the top fiber, at the bottom fiber, at support section and at the mid span section. So first we have find out the Stresses due to the pre-stressing force plus dead load. That means here we have considered without losses. So P0 is the initial pre-stressing force divided by area. It may be I section or T section minus P0E divided by ZE due to the eccentricity moment that is M by Z plus PMD divided by ZT. This value should be less than FC. This is the this is given in the problem. That means the permissible limit or permissible traces are given. If this is not given, we can find out from the step number 1. Depending on the grade, we can find out this FC. And F for the bottom, here less uh, should be greater than 0. That means it should not negative or no tension is permitted. That is the zone 1. So P0 by A plus P0 by uh, E divided by ZB instead of here ZT, here ZB is there because the bottom, press at the bottom, rest of the thing is same. Then we can check, this value should be greater than 0 and this value should be less than FC. Then add pre-stressing force plus dead load and the live load. Again repeat the same procedure, here after pre-stressing and after application of live load, some losses are there and that's why this pre-stressing force is the actual pre-stressing force after considering the losses. So it is Nita into P0 divided by A. Formula is same. Only instead of P0, we can apply N or Nita multiplied by P0. Minus Nita P0E divided by ZT and plus MD plus ML due to the dead load and the live load moment divided by ZT. This value should be again less than or equal to FCP and Z bottom again same value this value should be greater than FCT that means the negative uh, permissible tensile traces are given in concrete this value should not exceed the permissible limit then the section is safe again the traces then we can find out the current distances current distances are the distances where we can consider the resultant forces developed in such a way that the permissible or we can say that actual traces does not exceed the permissible limit. So KT is the R square divided by YB and KB is the R square divided by YT. This is the Y for bottom and Y for top. So eccentricity is equal to MD divided by F0 plus KB and E2 is equal to 
एम वन बाई एफ माइनस के टी नौ ई टू माइनस ई वन इज इक्वल टू और अप्रोक्सिमेटली इक्वल टू टेन परसेंट ऑफ द ई टू नौ लेटेस्ट ट्राई हियर एक वन एग्जाम्पल इज गिवन वी हेव कंसिडर सेवन के थर्टीन दैट मीन्स द देर आर सेवन वायर्स ऑफ थर्टीन एम एम डायमीटर दिस इज द मल्टी स्टैंड एंड वी कैन सी दैट द सेवन के फिफ्टीन दीज आर द पेटेंटेड स्ट्रैंड एंड दैट्स वाई इट इज रिटर्न लाइक दिस फॉर मल्टी स्ट्रैंड प्रेस वी हैव कंसिडर द प्रेसेस अप टू वॉट वी हैव एक्सटेंड दिस इज रिलेटेड विद द एफ पी नाइनटीन फिफ्टी टू ट्वेंटी वन हंड्रेड न्यूटन पर एम स्क्वायर एंड सेवन के थर्टीन दिस दैट इज इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट सेवेंटी फाइव एफ आर एंड फॉर दिस ऑल्सो जीरो पॉइंट सेवेंटी फाइव एफ आर देन फोर्स कैरिड बाय वन केबल ऑफ सेवन के थर्टीन सेवन के थर्टीन इज इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट सेवेंटी फाइव एफ आर मल्टीप्लाइड बाय सेवन इन टू देर आर सेवन वायर्स इन टू Area is 13, so pi by 4 into square of 13. Number of cables is equal to n 7 k 13 is equal to total processing force divided by f k 13. We get the number of cables. Repeat the same procedure for second also. And when once we calculate this number of cables, next is the check for available cover. Cover is available or not at the. This is generally. Uh, we can check at the mid span at support there is no problem so e is equal to e1 plus e2 divided by 2 available cover is equal to yb minus e eccentricity this should not exceed 40 plus shortening diameter divided by 2 or we can say that the what are the total diameter of the cable divided by 2 in mm if this is satisfied then okay Similarly, check for deflection. This check is already discussed in the previous lecture. Delta one, some may say delta one, delta two, or we we can say that this is delta due to pre-stressing force or delta due to we can say that the external load like that. That is the uh, delta d, delta l like that. You can use any notation. So delta one is equal to five by forty-eight. Yap zero. Yap zero means the pre-stressing force, initial pre-stressing force into E L square divided by E R, and this value should not exceed span divided by 300. Similarly, delta two is equal to as we know that the load uh, beam is simply supported and load is U D L, and that's why this is the standard case, standard formula for the deflection due to the load. So pi U divided by 384, and here W is related with the line load plus dead load. L to the power four divided by E. So similarly, we can find out the L three that is equal to live load divided by dead load multiplied by delta two. So delta into P plus dead load that is the pre-stressing force plus dead load that is equal to delta two minus delta one plus delta three. And the maximum permissible deflection should be restricted to span divided by two fifty. That means here this is the Related with the deflection due to pre-stressing force, and this is the overall span divided by 250. And if this criteria is satisfied, then we can say that our pre-stressing beam is safe. This is delta one due to pre-stressing force because the cable are provided from the bottom side below the neutral axis, and because of this, the beam will be lift like this upward. Due to dead load, the beam will be deflected downward. Due to dead load, the beam will be deflected downward, and that's why this delta one is upward and delta two and delta three is downward. We can find out the summation of actual deflection. Now we can check the. Uh, this is already uh, done in the previous lecture. Ha. Now the important thing is design of End block. This is very important, or we can say that the important part in the design of the pre-stressed concrete beam. Because whatever the pre-stressing force applied, it is applied through the end block, and that's why 
en blanc should be it is not i section or t section it is trapezoidal section or solid section total solid section so in this case we should know the cube strength of the concrete i think uh, time is over so we have discussed in the next lecture thank you thank you very much